So in regards to age equality and AMH, uh, it, this topic is one of the most common reasons why people consult help for fertility. So um, the AMH actually gives us an indication of how active and responsive the ovaries are. And it may actually give us some indication of the quality of the eggs which are left in the ovaries. Uh, so this may be because the, the healthiest eggs tend to be released each cycle. So by the time a woman's in her late 30s or even early 40s, this egg quality may and may not for some women uh, be compromised. So for me as a fertility specialist, when I'm treating somebody with age-related infertility, um, what I'm aiming to do is to help them to regulate their hormones and also support them to ovulate monthly and also increase their egg quality. So most of the time we can't actually increase AMH, although sometimes this does happen. So we need to increase the quality of the eggs that are remaining in the ovaries. And to be completely honest, improving egg quality really isn't easy. So people often know of CoQ10, maca, royal jelly, uh, all these things are commonly thought to improve fertility and egg quality. But where the challenge comes in treating egg quality is not uh, what is good for fertility and egg quality, but is actually what's good for your fertility and your egg quality. So this is going to be different for every person. And I believe that if you need to improve your egg quality, then you need to actually uh, consult help by a trained professional. Because it's not just knowing what supplements you need to take, but you also need to know what dosage, what quantity. And then one of the most important aspects of this is quality. So quality supplements, uh, you know, it's, it's better off to take, you're better off to take less uh, quality supplements than, you know, taking a whole bunch of over-the-counter supplements, which might not actually be very good quality. So another aspect of age-related infertility is uh, reducing FSH, which is follicle stimulating hormone. So this won't be for everybody, but in some women, uh, because this actually shows that the ovary is trying very, very hard to release an egg. Uh, there are ways that we can actually re reduce uh, FSH in some women, but, uh, but of course, this is gonna be individual for every person. So I would love to be able to tell you what to, to, you to take and to improve your egg quality and your age-related infertility. But the absolute truth is that this wouldn't be beneficial for you. Um, I'm so passionate about treating infertility and coaching for the Natural Fertility Prescription Program because I see such enormous benefits uh, for, for people, particularly older women who are, who are trying to conceive because it's such a thorough approach. Uh, but of course, starting off by improving your diet and lifestyle, that is absolutely going to help. So the sooner you can actually cut out coffee and alcohol, yeah, you can cut out processed foods, quit smoking if you need to, and then increase good organic fruit and vegetables, nuts and seeds, legumes and whole grains, then the sooner your air quality will have a chance to improve. So I'll give you a list of things that you can avoid immediately to start to improve your air quality. So uh, the first one is coffee and caffeinated drinks. Uh, then we have alcohol, we have uh, smoking and nicotine, uh, trans fatty acids such as margarine, hydrogenated oils and fats, plus any other fats that are very cooked at, at high temperatures. Um, coconut fat can be used for this, uh, but you'd want to try and avoid any other cooked, uh, high, cooked at high temperature fats. So you also want to avoid non-organically grown fruits and vegetables and processed foods. Uh, we want to cut out refined carbohydrates and sugar. So this is anything that is co commercially produced, such as cakes and biscuits and lollies. And also you want to cut out sodas because they're just full of sugar. Uh, we want to avoid microwave food and also canned food. And then to reduce your uh, consumption of mercury, we want to reduce uh, the large fish, such as tuna and shark, swordfish, king mackerel. And we also want to cut out non-organic animal products because they um, bioaccumulate pesticides. So if you are eating uh, organic dairy and red meat, this should be kept to a minimum. Uh, but also if we avoid food additives, artificial sweeteners, and then all of your toxic personal care products, uh, such as cosmetics, um, 
you know, cleansers and body washes and shampoos and conditioners, and then also cut out your uh, toxic household cleaning products because uh, they all contain a nasty array of chemicals. For air quality, we want to reduce your exposure to electromagnetic radiation. And this is, can, can come from computers, Wi-Fi, mobile phones, and particularly air travel. Uh, there are different options for reducing exposure to these things, which we discuss in the program. We also want to reduce painkillers uh, because this might may disrupt ovulation and could also potentially lead to poor air quality. And then reducing contact with paint fumes, house renovation dust, peak hour traffic, anything in your environment that could be toxic. Uh, with drinking and showering water, we want to make sure that that is filtered. And you want to also reduce your exposure to things like x-rays, vaccinations and fillings. So as you can see, there are a lot of things in our diets and our environment that can actually impact our air quality. And one of the biggest benefits of the Natural Fertility Prescription Program, I think, is that Eva will take you through all of these over the 16 weeks and give you in-depth knowledge as to why these things need to be avoided. And she also gives recommendations on how to reduce your exposure to these things.